You are watching Otter Television. I am Leon Kelly, no relation to Chad or Jim, and you are watching The Current here on Otter Television. And it's a new season of Otter Football right around the corner is week one this weekend, and it is a big one. The Otters face the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Let's talk, though, about the recruits. There's not much news to talk about. We don't have a lot of big names to highlight uh, outside of, well, the Otters have a couple names that are interested in them, but there's no one screaming to come to GLU this year right now, especially big names. Like, the Otters are not looking at top-tier talent coming in this year for some reason. The two-time defending champions, certainly not the favorites of the ball right now. But uh, when it comes to All-American, things are good. Danny Davis and Rashawn Washington both make All-NCAA first team. No real shock with Danny Davis, a career year last season. Rashawn Washington expecting to bounce back this season. And Deron Hartman makes it as a return man. I've been told by Coach Dubman, Hartman not going to carry that load this year with him starting uh, in the defensive backfield. On the second team, Brian Washington makes it a defensive tackle. He's the only second team All-American there. Now for All-Conference, well, Eric Brewer makes the preseason All-Conference first team along with Herman Simpson. No shock on those two, the prime players at their respective position for the Otters. And we've got the names we've already stated. Danny Davis, Rashawn Washington as well there on the all-conference first team. Mike Clark makes the all-conference first team at free safety. He will be the veteran in that defensive backfield when it comes to playing time. And Deron Hartman there at returner again. As for second team all-conference, you've got David Burke, who's expected to be a big playmaker for this team this year, and Brian Winston, wide receiver and tight end respectively. Interesting here, Albert Alford got voted in. He is the transfer guard the Otters got. He won't be playing this year as he has to sit out. But interesting that he made the all-conference second team there. Well, now let's talk about the preseason polls because you'll notice the top 10 is very lacking in your two-time defending back-to-back champions. They come in at number 11 on the year and will be facing, of course, the number one team, Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, you can say all you want, well, the Otters aren't as good this year. That secondary is not as good. The defense is going to be questionable. You can say all you want, I don't give a shit. The Otters are two-time defending national champions and you're not going to put them in the top 10. Two-time, back-to-back. It feels like the disrespect's coming out early. The Otters, of course, in the game of the week playing Alabama. And no shock here, the Crimson Tide are favored. The Otters still getting the short end of the stick. But I can't say I'm shocked. This is a former Nick Saban-led team. Saban already retiring uh, from the prestigious university. But, I mean, a lot of pieces of this puzzle brought in from Saban still, I'm sure. But this is a tough schedule for the Otters. After this Bama game, they got to go to Death Valley at Louisiana State. So it doesn't get any easier for this Otters team early on in the season. Now, uh, you see the names here. We'll talk about them even more so for the Otters. Uh, very interesting mixes, uh, mix-ups happening with the way this team has to play this year because they don't have the familiar faces we're used to because of graduation. As for the players to watch for the Crimson Tide, Nick Clay, or I'm sorry, Nicholas Clay as it's written down, he is going to be their prime running back. Got his first year really getting playing time last year. Only saw one rushing touchdown, but near six yards per carry in his snaps. So a solid, real, more brutal running back. And, uh, It's going to take the linebackers to get the job done, I think, against Nick Clay. As for their top threat on offense outside of quarterback, I call it Nick White. Uh, Eight receptions two years ago, eight receptions last year. He had 556 yards through the air 
last year, and I'm sorry, that was receiving touchdowns, not just receptions. But a big year for him nonetheless. White's been very consistent, and that's the frightening part. Uh, defensively, Eric McCormick is their top guy there. Uh, he only had one sack, though, all of last year. Expect him to be more of the run stopper than the pass rusher for this Crimson Tide D-line. Now, left outside linebacker Dennis Mitchell can rush the passer. He's got three and a half sacks on the season last year. One interception to go along with that and over 60 tackles, eight of which for a loss. So he can definitely get the job done defensively. In the middle of that linebacking core, you have Ian Johnson, who was the leader of this defense. Two and a half sacks last year, six passes deflected over or I'm sorry, 60 tackles uh, exactly, and nine for a loss. On the other side, it's Matt Preston. Now, Preston had a big year last year. He had over 80 tackles, nine for a loss, two and a half sacks, one pick, two pass deflected, and two forced fumbles. So a monster year for him. You got to watch out for him on that side. And finally, the strong safety Thomas Woodard. He is their prime defensive back. He had a handful of tackles, two for a loss, one sack, one pick, one forced fumble, and a recovery to go along with it. Now their player to watch, though, that's Josh Barrett. He is the senior quarterback and had a very good year. 43 touchdowns, eight interceptions, I think says enough. And he can use both his legs and his arm to do damage. For the Otters, they have their own weapon like that. Jermaine Brett, who stepped in after the whole chaos with uh, with the golden boy Brian Hampton. 15 touchdowns, 6 interceptions off 1,753 yards passing. And, of course, added on 528 more yards rushing and 7 more rushing touchdowns. Now, speaking of Brian Hampton, let's cover this real quick. The elephant in the room. He did transfer to LSU. I do not know if he'll be playing next week. Uh, I will get word on that and have it for you. We may see a battle that may be bloody for all we know there. Andre Edwards, now you're starting running back. 68 carries all of last season for 419 yards, 6.2 yards a carry with six rushing touchdowns. Now he was behind Jeff Hardaway, and when you're behind Jeff Hardaway, you don't get a ton of carries but he did spell him a couple times and he has looked good out of his play last year we'll see if he can bounce off of that but we all know who everybody talks about when it comes to the goal line game the vulture Aries McCutcheon had six touchdowns last year all vultured touchdowns 75 rushing yards on 18 carries for 4.2 yards a carry and that's when most of his carries were about two yards out so now let's talk about the weapons. David Burke, 36 catches last year, 625 yards and eight receiving touchdowns. He did drop six passes, but the sophomore hopefully has worked on those hands plenty. Herman Simpson, of course, your leading pass rusher this year. Uh, seven sacks all of last year, a handful of tackles, 12 for a loss. He's got to lead the way on the edge. Danny Davis, though, leading the way inside with his career year last year. 21 total tackles, 10 for a loss, and six sacks coming from his inside position at defensive tackle. Now, teamed with Brian Washington, that helps out a ton. Now, let's talk about Corey Haynes. Nearly left for the draft. He was talked back in by Coach Dubman. Seven tackles, one for a loss last year. He was playing behind Calhoun, so uh, didn't get a lot of time. One sack and one pick. Now the players to watch, it's the secondary. Two freshmen starting at corner on the outside, and of course, Jerron Hartman's first start at strong safety for a whole year. We'll see if this young secondary can do the job, and we'll see if the Otters can shock everyone and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Crimson Tide.